Hello my friends, we have lots of the news coming from the front lines. At first let's concentrate on the good news for Ukrainian army. It seems like after all the Ukrainian command decided to attack Horlivka city. At least I see the preparation for this possible scenario. It is happening as in Kherson Oblast, then Ukraine landed across the Dnieper river, creating lots of the bridgeheads. So this is Horlivka and today Ukraine went on a tag in this place. Before Ukraine advanced in this position and we have the new vector. So the new bridgehead is forming for Ukrainian army. Very interesting. The interesting thing over here is that there is the railway station Stancia Mayorska. It is quite a big one but Russia is unable to use it because it's very close to the front lines. However, this station is the communication hotspot for the possible future advancement towards Horlivka. There are many of the ways to reach the Horlivka city from this direction. Direction. I would say it's even more profitable compared to the previous Ukrainian attack direction because the advancement in this area during the winter time is very hard. There are no robust roads, but here we have very good communications. And here is the confirmation from the other source showing that Ukraine took the ground in this particular area. So this is the railway station and the village nearby. Ukraine has two of the attack vectors in this place. The red territory you see on this military map was taken from Ukraine in 2014. And it was the checkpoint for civilians to transfer from the self-proclaimed republic to Ukraine and back. So Ukrainian army has decided to liberate the area that was occupied for the long 10 years. And let's go to our 3D map. I know that many of you guys like this map because it shows the terrain in this particular area and it shows that Ukrainian army has that certain advantage because this area is on the high ground compared to the nearby village, for example this part. For now the map shows that Ukraine wasn't really able to liberate lots of the territories, but it could be not correct. Ukraine might have liberated more area because it's hard to judge it on this military map. Here is just the railway station I was talking to you about and there is the road that goes in front of the hill just into Horlivka. Quite a good place to create the bridgehead because here is just a small village nearby to this station. Russia will try to secure it but other than that there is no any urban environment or something like that. If we go from this area to the previous Ukrainian attack vector here Ukraine liberated more of the territories compared to what we see nowadays in the fresh zone but here the terrain is really difficult and there are no any robust roads to go to Horlivka city at least during the bad season or the winter time. Overall I think those are the awesome news because Ukraine has the potential to strike the Russian army at some points of the front lines even though Russia is trying to reach the initiative in this war. My friends before we go to the other parts of the front lines and today we definitely have something to speak about. Well, firstly, let me tell you about the partner and also the sponsor of my channel. Try to guess. Yes, it is the Atlas VPN. Why am I constantly telling you to join the Atlas VPN service? Well, guys, basically because it's the best product out there on the market. Plus, they still have the Black Friday deal. They extended it a little, so you have the chance to join it for just 149 per month plus you'll have 12 months extra. It's the huge discount, it's the lowest price possible, which guarantees you the best features of the Atlas VPN, the digital freedom and security. For Atlas VPN, I trust the most. Also, Atlas VPN grants me the full access to any kind of series on the Netflix streaming platform. So I don't care about the government restrictions any longer. And sometimes I check the enemy sites, social media, 
and for that I also used the Atlas VPN. You can basically change your virtual location to any point in the world. And Atlas VPN is so fast that you will never feel the difference whether it's on or off. So guys, and now please check out my personal link in the video description just below or scan the QR code available on the screen where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium with the huge Black Friday discount for just $149 per month plus you'll have 12 months extra. It's a superb deal which is valid by the way, especially for my followers. So what are you waiting for? Hurry up to join the club. Let's go to the other Ukrainian achievement. We have the update on this military map. I knew that Ukraine went on the attack towards Dibrova, but finally there is the publication shows that Ukraine is reaching the ground. Not a long time ago Russia started their counterattack in that place, but Ukraine fights well and Russia is unable to move. Moreover, Ukraine gains the previously lost positions in this forest. So here is Dibrova and this is the place of Ukrainian attack. As you can see, a very flat terrain in this area. Just some light deviation and it's not very significant, but forest itself is a little on a higher ground, so Ukraine actually achieved a lot in taking this place under control. But the forest is quite big in this place. This is the area not far away from the place we are talking about. Because of the constant war conditions, you may see how forest changed, so basically even from the sun satellite image, you see that there are much less trees over here compared to the previous photo. So it's the previous one, it's the current one. Sadly, nature also suffers because of the war. All right, now let's go to Marinka. Russia still struggles to get this village under control. For today, Ukraine is controlling several of the streets already. From what I know, our guys are there and they are fighting. We have the frontline correction for today, so it was yesterday and it is today. So here it's understandable that Ukraine is controlling a couple of the streets here. And here obviously Russia reached the end of those streets, but two of those are under Ukrainian control. So the fight between Ukrainian army and the second biggest army in the world goes for a few of the streets in one of the villages somewhere on the eastern part of Ukraine. The fight for it actually on goes for many years because you can see the self-proclaimed territory is very close to this area, to Marinka. Again, just a single village and how many of those villages do we have in Ukraine? Like hundreds of thousands probably, well tens of thousands for sure. Again it shows the failure of the Russian propaganda because they already told that they liberated, as they say, this village. But actually Ukraine is still keeping control over some of the areas of this village. And based on the size of this village, I would say that Ukraine is controlling at least 7 or maybe even 10% of the village. That's quite a lot if we're speaking about the current situation in Marinka. So why Russia started to advance more in Marinka? Why they sent more forces over here? Because maybe they are unable to reach their goal in Avdivka so far till 14th of December. That's why Putin wants at least this small victory in Marinka. Putin wants to declare some victory, some achievement before announcing that he goes for elections in 2024. Just four months left for the Russian elections to start and Putin still hesitates to say that he is going for them. I think that elections in Russia is the big different topic. We need to speak about it, but I think not in this video, maybe the next one, then I'll see no any changes on the front lines. Let's go for Avdivka, where Russia started their advancement. Probably it's their third attempt to encircle Avdivka village, and they have took the ground recently in Stepova, they partially entered the village, and also they have the new vector over here. So it was yesterday and it is today. Unfortunately, Ukraine is unable to stop the Russian advancement in this particular area, but Russia should advance towards this facility, the factory, to cut the main road. If they advance over here, it doesn't mean 
anything basically for Ukrainian supplies in Avdivka town. But if we have some of the interesting news, it looks like the Russian assault forces, their infantry group was totally ambushed by Ukrainian artillery. So let me show you the video. Okay guys, this is the screenshot from the video. All of those dots which you may see on the screens are the Russian soldiers, so the Russian infantry. So what are they doing? They're trying to advance towards Stepove in Avdivka direction, but Ukraine is using the cluster munition to target the Russian infantry. The video is available on my Telegram channel again because I am unable to publish it over here. Probably you know why. What can I say? That all of those dots were kaboomed with the help of the cluster shells and the standard munition artillery. As you see, Russia is using the new tactics they advance with infantry during the night time. This video was filmed using the thermal camera on the drone. Russia started to use the new tactics. They sent some of the infantry open fields during the night time, so they are spotted by the thermal cameras on the drones and our guys are working on that particular group. At the same time, one more group advances wearing this kind of the shell, kind of the ninja turtle inside the box. But the thing is that the drone camera is unable to spot them because there is no worm coming out from the shell. And by crawling little by little, they may advance towards Ukrainian positions, towards trenches, and then start to ambush them. Luckily, this night they were spotted by the drones, after all, and were targeted. So let's speak more about the Crimea direction. Before, I told you that Ukraine has the success on the south, but we have also the military map update showing the advancement of the Russian army. Actually, the huge advancement. And today we have the map clarification, so correction. It was yesterday, it is today. Russia may try to advance to Terni in more easier way, let's say, going downhill. However, it's very early to say if they are capable to reach uh, those lakes over here, but the distance it's not that far as I thought at first, just 6.3 kilometers. Hmm. The idea for Russia is to establish this new border reaching this uh, river in Torske and also advancing all across this river to Makivka. They want to take all of this part of the ground and later on they want to reach Liman. There was the fight already the last year you may see the border, all of that territory was liberated by Ukrainian forces, Izum and all of that part. I remember those encouraging news and happy days for Ukrainians, then Russia left. The Kiev Oblast was forced to leave it, Chernigiv, Sumy and Kharkiv. The Kharkiv operation was really a masterpiece. Russians were not prepared for the Ukrainian offensive. The similar stuff happened in Kherson Oblast, and I was almost sure that Ukraine would liberate more territories this year, but unfortunately we have just a light advancement on the south. I already shared the latest statement of Vladimir Zelensky about the Ukrainian counteroffensive on the south. He said that we wanted quick results, but unfortunately we did not achieve them. Why did it happen? Well, on my opinion, I think we underestimated our enemy and their defense lines on the south. Ukraine gained the wings and was flying high after the huge achievements in Kharkivsky and Kherson Oblast the last year, but unfortunately this year Ukraine lost the wings and fell down into reality. But I would say that the current state of Ukraine is not the most terrible since the beginning of the war. Just remember the first month that the fight was ongoing near to Kyiv, with some of the sabotage groups deployed right into the capital of Ukraine. There was the time for uncertainty and the big question for Ukrainian independence. Now we're sure that we keep the Ukrainian independence. President Zelensky said that he is happy that our army is not retreating. I think as it was at first, then the war had just started. But we continue to lose people and it is bad. At the same time, we didn't get all of the weapons we wanted, sadly. But I can't complain 
too much either. So technically our partners, those allies who support Ukraine with weaponry, are not obligated to send that weaponry to Ukraine. But they understand that if Russia gains the control over Ukraine, it will create one more army from Ukrainians. And that would be a greatest threat for the other European countries. So if we want to keep the Europe stable, we need to support Ukraine right now with weaponry. That is what our allies are doing. But still it's not enough. Because Russia still has more resources and their own allies. By the way, I have some information that Ukraine might have received many more shells than the official declared number because we also have the countries which support Ukraine but do not declare it, let's say, openly screaming, like for example Pakistan, because it looks like we have the thousands of the artillery shells from that country. President Zelensky also said that we do not have enough power to be faster in our advancement, but at the same time it doesn't mean that we should give up. For the Russian army it's uh, similar, they also don't have enough power to achieve their goals on the front lines very fast, but they gain the ground very slowly. I would say the same as Ukraine. Yes, Russia now wants to break the front lines in many points, they want to get the initiative, but Ukraine advanced that much also during the summertime. Overall, it's mostly the same, I would say. And Russia also doesn't want to give up their so-called goals of the so-called special military operation. It means that the war will continue, unfortunately, probably for many years. This is what Der Spiegel says in their article about Ukraine, because it is not profitable basically to advance nowadays for Ukrainian or for the Russian armies. In any attack there are huge losses. Alright, it seems like Germany continued to support Ukraine with military aid. Germany, thank you so much for that. Again, we have lots of the vehicles, engineering equipment, artillery shells, uh, Danke. Alright, there was the night fight between Russians and Ukrainian forces, not far away from Dubrova. That is the point where Ukraine advanced recently, so Russian vehicles, three of them, were targeted by Ukrainian artillery probably. Also, Ukraine and Russia start to use the FPV drones during the night time. Guys, there's the terrible video that was shared today on the internet. So the group of the Russian soldiers captured the positions of the Ukrainian soldiers. There were two of the Ukrainians in this particular trench. Our guys ran out of the ammunition and decided to surrender. But later on, Russians fired directly towards our soldiers, even though they were like that, surrendered. We have this drone video elsewhere, you may easily find it. One more registered war crime of the Russian army. This is the screenshot of the Russian vehicle dash cam. You may see a few of the people in front, all of them are the Russian military. Moreover, the driver is also a Russian soldier. It happened in Russia, Kamchatka, so the driver hit the crowd of the Russian militants. Those soldiers were delivered to the local hospital. Most of them are in very bad condition. So at least they will not go to Ukraine. Ukraine also uses the anti-tank system Stugna to stop the Russian advancement in Avdiivka. So as you can see again, Russia advances with their tank in the front and the infantry vehicles. After all, the tank was targeted, as well as the other Russian armored vehicles. Okay, this video shows who our army is fighting with. So this is the captured Russian soldier, this is the Ukrainian interviewer. They have the YouTube channel where they interview the Russian prisoners and also Ukrainian traders to understand their motives and this program is very popular in Ukraine. During the interview the prisoner of war has the chance to go to their loved ones using just a simple connection, Skype, WhatsApp, whatever. And this guy called to his home and we have the translation about it. I published it on my Telegram channel. 
And they were just drinking. Hello. They do not care about the guy's destiny. They are having fun with alcohol. It really shows the Russian society, the social level in the villages and small towns behind the main city hubs of Russia, with complete poverty and alcoholism. So people are just going to the army because they watch the Russian propaganda TV. In the blue screen they see the advertisement to join the Russian army for a free walk in Ukraine and to get the easy money. They think like that, okay, I'll get the money from Russia and also I'll go to Ukraine and loot some of the houses and I'll sell some of the stuff to buy more vodka. That's the average Russian soldier. Well, there are also ex-Russian prisoners. This is one more example. It's hard to call this guy a human. Well, he lost his life in Ukraine for sure. We already have the confirmation about it. So what he did before, a couple of years ago, he tortured the cat and published the videos online. He tortured the cat for one week filming lots of the videos and the part of the Russian society, the small minority, they called and spread information about this man, if we may call him like that. Well, he got like three years in prison and then went to Ukraine for the hero medal and actually to make his sick fantasies reality. Because what he did with a cat, he might have done in Ukraine with real people. And Russia has many of those maniacs fighting for them in Ukraine. So they are losing the bad part of their society, the worst. Unfortunately, on the other hand, Ukraine is losing the best part of our society. Hopefully he got the same treatment as he done with the cat. The Chechen Sultan Dondon Kadyrov presented some of the vehicles for their local police, for the patrol police. Most of them are obviously China-made, but there are a couple of the vehicles made in Germany. Mercedes-Benz Gelendwagen. I wonder why police needs uh, those kind of the vehicles. Well, I guess that Kadyrov has some sort of the child traumas. I think that he was a kid. He wasn't able to get enough presents. That's why now he's playing with many cars. Before he presented Mercedes-Benz and other vehicles, Western made to his bodyguards or someone. Has Kadyrov spent his own funds on that stuff? No, those are the funds from the Russian taxpayers, not from the Chechen taxpayers, but from the other parts of Russia, because Chechnya is unable to produce lots of the products or to sell their resources. That's why they gain the funds from Moscow. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. Also, don't forget to check my personal link in the video description just below, where you may get the Auto Supreme Premium with a huge Black Friday discount. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.